Hi, Adam here. I've seen some headlines recently that have made me think about equal pay and gender pay. And I thought, it's a nice sunny day. Why don't we go for a walk and a talk and have a little chat? So with the election coming up, uh, Today, I saw um, articles about how both Labour and Liberal Democrats have laid out their plans for tackling equal pay. And actually, you get in there and they're talking about gender pay reporting, uh, one of them increasing it to uh, comp down to companies with 50 employees rather than 250. Um, the other one, you know, looking at more uh, punishment for people who fail to report and expanding it to cover other protected characteristics, which is great. But that's not equal pay. And then you have the BBC, where you have presenters, uh, the high paid presenters. Uh, now that they sort of, you know, publish the lists and where people fit in brackets, there's been a lot of attention to that. And again, a focus on unequal pay. And the articles frequently mention it as gender pay gap. And the thing is, they're different terms. We're conflating two different things. So equal pay is whether or not you are receiving the same pay or specific terms of your employment contractor as someone of the opposite gender in, the, in like or equivalent work of the same overall value. So you're making an individual comparison. With gender pay, you are comparing the total earnings of all the men and all the women in a particular group or area, regardless of what they do, or uh, anything else. So one is a very specific comparison and the other one is a large scale comparison. So they are two very different things. So am I splitting hairs here or does this really matter? Does it make a difference if we're, you know, mixing up the terms and we're using them a little interchangeably? Well, Yes and no. I mean, it's good to raise the focus, but at the same time, they do refer to those very different things. And importantly, gender pay is far more complex of an issue. The gender pay gap is very real, don't get me wrong. But what it shows is that as a society, we are undervaluing the contribution of half of our population when looked at through the lens of what they can receive for paid work. However, you'll see various studies that sort of take a national pay gap and then start to break it down into sectors and then take it down into levels of work and into sort of niches. And as you do that, typically you will see the national gender pay gap reduce and reduce and in some cases become negligible, i.e. there is no real difference in pay but at that point, you're looking at equal pay because you're down to people in the like or the um, equivalent work. And again, you know, uh, and this matters because you will find people who say, well, look, you know, if we break the numbers down, if we get right down into the nitty gritty, uh, aren't we paying everybody the same? Aren't we treating people fairly? So what's the issue if there's a big gap overall? And so and that's why it matters. If you talk about equal pay, you give people, uh, when you mean gender pay, you give people an opportunity to sort of uh, kick up a fuss, to counter a narrative when actually it's two different things. So why is gender pay more complex than equal pay? Well, the Forces Society does great work around gender pay gap. If you haven't seen their website, do go and check it out, forcetsociety.org.uk. Uh, they've got a lot of great material on there, and to be honest, some of it I'm going to crib here uh, and, uh, and summarise, because they really do an excellent job. They lay out four causes of a gender pay gap, and the first one is discrimination. Equal pay gap, um, paying the same for uh, men and women doing the same job. It's been legal for almost 50 years, 2020, 50th anniversary of the Equal Pay Act, when we should have all got our act together and started paying people equally. And the thing is, by and large, we are. Um, you know, if you look at organisations and you work with organisations, there is no, you know, big conspiracy to bring women in and pay them less. No one is trying to do it. Um, doesn't mean it doesn't happen, but it's very unusual. It's very much the exception. So it's while we should stay vigilant for it, it's only one small piece of the gender pay puzzle. Caring. 
in society, women are still far, far more likely than men to have the majority of the child caring responsibilities and also looking after elderly or sick relatives. So as a result, they are far more likely to be in part time work or work that they can do flexibly. And that work is again more likely to be lower paid. So because they're taking on this caring responsibility in an unequal proportions to men, they're more likely to actually be in lower paid work as a result. Third issue, that of a divided labour market. So there is an observable pay difference in the general levels of pay between some sectors. Sectors that are traditionally female, so things like the leisure sector or the care sector, uh, earn less than sectors that are traditionally male, such as engineering or skilled trades. Now, <laughs> an interesting fact is we've seen a reduction in the national pay gap over the last uh, 20 years or so and when you break that down a large factor in the pay gap reducing is actually the reduction in our manufacturing sector i.e men who were working in there were more of these paid higher paid jobs going around that people were working in so as a result um actually we saw a reduction because men were going into other sectors and other jobs and some of these are disappearing and closing the gap so Great the gap closed, not maybe necessarily the reason we wanted it. But that pay gap exists. Women's work, so to speak, is more typically going to earn less than men's work. And fourth, men in the most senior roles. Now for me, men in the most senior roles, but also just generally, an unequal split of the organisation. To be honest, it doesn't really matter if your organisation is 50-50, male and female, so long as you have the same proportion overall. People quite rightly point out that in some sectors, men are the minority or women are the minority. And actually, from a gender pay perspective, that's OK, as long as it's an even distribution. So if you've only got 10% females, but you have 10% at the bottom and 10% at the top, that's going to um, be fine from a gender pay gap, as long as you're paying equally. But in almost all the organisations, and it was an overwhelming theme of the first gender pay reports, very much highlighting, yes, we have a gender pay gap, but we're paying people the same. However, it's just simply that we have more high paid men in our most senior roles and lower paid women um, in our most junior roles. And that's driving the gender pay gap. So what does this all mean? What are we actually going to do about it? Well, there are plenty of things that we can do, and the government passed the most important ones so that we now have compulsory gender pay reporting for companies of over 250 employees in the UK. Why do I say it's the most important? Because it starts the conversation. It's forced companies to actually look at, measure, understand, and then talk about what they're going to do. What gets measured gets done. But of course, as I say, that's the first step. The action plan, what employers are actually going to do about it, is far more important. And again, Forcet Society has some excellent suggestions. If you uh, weren't already looking at this, you didn't know what your company's doing already. So, one of the steps, try and build that culture of flexible, part-time working job shares. Rather than it being exceptional or something people have to go through, actually embrace it, advertise it wherever you can. If you have a role that can be performed in that manner, advertise it as it. And only have a strong business case if you're not going to. Don't be, we've never done that before, or I don't know if that's uh, right for us. Try and embrace it, because that will support the caring responsibilities. And also help ensure that um, better paid work and more senior work is also there to help with progression of people that do have the caring responsibilities. But this is for men and women, so trying to get men into sharing the caring as well. Support the progression, support the progression of women throughout your whole organisation. So I've said it's that uneven split that actually we've just got more men at the top than we do at the women. It's sort of an inverted pyramid for where they just uh, where they sit. So take that. And yeah, find the women, find your talent and ensure that they are moving through the pipeline proportionately to the male population. And kind of simpler one, but try and look at introducing the living wage. All sorts of good reasons for introducing the living wage. Could have a whole separate topic on that. Maybe I will sometime. But as we've touched on, women's work 
so to speak, <laughs> tends to be lower paid. And introducing the living, living wage typically has a disproportionate benefit to your female workers. So helping to raise that pay and enjoying all the goodness of the true living wage will help close your gender pay gap. So there are lots of other things that can be done. But importantly, these all focus on those main causes of the gender pay gap. Working on the caring, trying to ensure that it's not just women or that if women are doing it, they have access to better paid work and to more senior work. To try and ensure your progression pipeline and to try and address some of that root factors where um, some of the lower paid work in particular sectors is actually um, underpaid in comparison to roles that have been traditionally dominated by men. However, the one thing we need to remember out of all of these is that they take time. Regrettably, there is no simple fix where we can wave a wand and make the gender pay gap disappear. And a lot of, again, the articles and the discussion about it seem to focus on kind of, oh, it's going very slowly. How come this is taking so long? Surely we can pay men and women the same. Well, we do. Individually. Individually, we pay men and women the same in almost all cases. It's very unusual. But as a society, no, we're not. So with these actions, these are all things that we can do to try and close that gender pay gap, try and ensure that women in society are receive the same value through their paid work as their male counterparts. And of course, keep an ever watchful eye on the equal pay as well. All right, well, thanks very much for joining me for a little walk and a talk, slightly longer one than normal, but uh, yeah. Enjoy the rest of your day. Cheerio.